up, everybody? Welcome to the cooking show. I'm a big cookbook collectioner. I, I, got, I got a good amount of cookbook. I thought to myself, hey, wouldn't it be fun if I legit do a little showing of what cookbook you should get if you want to learn more about pasta. So here's my list of cookbook to get you better with pasta. So the first cookbook is flour plus water equal pasta, you know, just simple mathematic. Basically all the recipe, all the basic of recipe uh, from pasta dough, I got them all in this book. This is how I learned how to make great pasta. This book is phenomenal. Sometimes some book, it's all over the place. Uh, this one, you know where to get the information and it's straightforward. It's nicely described, so you still got a lot of information, but it's easy to read. A lot of recipe in there too. If you got three level of chef, like a beginner, uh, advanced and like pro chef, I mean, this one would be around advanced and pro chef, you know, it's still pretty easy to do. It's not like crazy out of this world. All right, second book uh, we got. My favorite person in the world, I mean, okay, maybe not my favorite, but probably the chef that inspired me the most when it's time to cook. Uh, this guy, I made so many uh, recipes from his cookbook. Actually, I finished three of his cookbook. I did every single recipe. And this one is probably his best, I think, because it's, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's still really accessible to beginners. It's super authentic to Italy some amazing recipe and so this is not just a pasta book there's a lot of stuff in there but definitely a go-to I mean you guys know Jimmy Oliver most of you okay yo I'm gonna do a statement everybody might get upset with that but Gordon Ramsay do a lot of good thing maybe a lot of thing better than Jimmy Oliver but uh, I got a lot of cookbook and I got some Gordon Ramsay and Jimmy Oliver cookbook and Jimmy Oliver cookbook are Fuck off, 10 times better than Gordon Ramsay cookbook. Gordon Ramsay is not known for his cookbook, you know, and Jimmy Oliver is, is all about that. So yeah, that's, I, I know that's a big statement, but hey, you know what, Gordon, you gotta, you gotta step up your cookbook game, man. It's, it's kind of weak. Fuck off you, you fat, useless sack of fucking Yankee danky doodle shite. So yeah, this one would be between beginner and like advanced home cook uh, type of chef. So if you're, if you're at this stage, you're really gonna like this one. So yeah, this one is named Mastering Pasta. It's different from the first one I showed you. So I, it, there's still a lot of good recipe uh, from pasta dough. Uh, they got different mentality, you know, they, they, they go at it differently. This one though, I, I've learned a lot about flour. It's really in depth about how flour works and how you use it with pasta. If you want to learn more about this, this one is a is, is a banger. You know, it's it's on top of the list. This one's gonna have a lot of a uh, classic stuff, but it's gonna have a little switch, a little thing different, which is kind of like my style. You know, I like to do st stuff classically, but if I can switch it up to make it better, I'm gonna do it. it. This one is probably like the other one. It's probably into advanced chef, not a pro chef, but still. Uh, a pretty nice book. And so for the last one, and this one is probably the one with the least amount of pasta recipe. There's still a couple out there, but uh, it's way more advanced. So this one is definitely a pro chef category. It's out of this world type of recipe. The, the, most of the recipe, you're gonna have a headache trying to do them, but it's so smart. There's so many good ideas in there. It's just genius. This one is Never Trust a Skinny Italian Chef by Massimo Bottura. Um, one of the best restaurants in the world. There's all of his good recipe in there. And it's it's a lot of thing, you know. First, first, it's a big book. There's a lot of information and there's a lot of story behind it. There's a lot of technique. There's a lot of ID. This one is a must. What do you, what do you think about that, Mr. Cat? Oh, do we do a test? Do we do we try to do a test to see what Mr. Cat's favorite book is? All right, I place one cat food on each one of them, and Mr. Cat is gonna choose which one he likes the most. Which one will he choose? He chose it. Guys, we got a winner. Master of Pasta is Mr. Cat choice. So if you want to know Mr. Cat choice, Master of Pasta. Uh, my choice, personally, probably flour and pasta.
Let's talk about today. What are we doing today? This one is wild. There, there's a lot of uh, random stuff, but it goes super well together. So we're gonna do some pasta that we're gonna color with some black sesame seed. We're gonna add some tuna tartare on top. We're gonna do a chimichurri. We're gonna do a little crumble. It's gonna be f like a lot of stuff going on, but everything works super well together. So yeah, for the pasta dough, we're gonna do a classic double flour with semolina dough. And for making it the color black, we're gonna use a bunch of black sesame seeds. So we're basically gonna do like kind of a tiny. So for the plate, we got a couple of different stuff. So first we got a crumble that we're gonna make. We're gonna use some garlic and some bread. After that, we're gonna do a chimichurri. So we got a bunch of herb. We got a nice jalapeno. We got meat, dill, what's the dill? Um, a little bit of parsley, green onion. We got some shallot and caper. I think caper are kind of a must. A little bit of olive oil and lemon juice is gonna be needed. And we got the beautiful piece of tuna. Oh yeah, <laughs> can I tell you one thing about the tuna? Mr. Cat is number one fan of tuna. I think it's, it's, it's probably his favorite thing. Tuna gotta be on the top of the list. There's nothing he like more than tuna. Actually, we can play a little game with him. All right, so first we're gonna do our black tahini. We're gonna put a bunch of black sesame seed into a blender and we're gonna make it into powder. When it's looking nice and powdery, we're gonna add some olive oil. And we're gonna continue to blend until everything is homogeneous. And this stuff is so good, it will last you a long time. All right, it's time to do the pasta dough. We're gonna put our flour and semolina together. We're gonna put it on our counter. We're gonna do our little well. We're gonna add the water and we're gonna add the black tangy. We're just gonna add a couple tablespoons. After that, you slowly mix everything up, starting from the center until everything gets together and it starts resembling like a little ball. And then we work the dough for five to 10 minutes just to get our gluten ready and we should end up with a beautiful little ball like that. Look at that beauty. And we're gonna wrap this one and let it rest for 30 minutes. When it has nicely rested, we're gonna take a rolling pin and we're gonna make it thin as possible so we can put it into our pasta machine. And then we just roll it level by level until we got the thickness desired. Oh yeah, and for those who are wondering like what thickness should I do, uh, you're gonna learn. At one point you're always gonna go with the same thickness. I Sometimes I go a little bit more thin depending on what I'm doing, but it's usually always the same thing. So when our dough is ready, we're gonna divide it into the same length pieces and we're gonna add some flour so it doesn't stick together. So you can do this part by hand, but I got a machine. So I'm just gonna use it and I'm gonna do some beautiful angel hair. It's way more easy with the machine and look at that, all even and beautiful. For them not to stick together, I like to put them on a dry rack for one to two hours and then put it on a plate like this. All right, next we're gonna do the crumble. We're gonna add the bread into a machine and the garlic and we're gonna add a pinch of salt. We're gonna slice everything together until it's super fine. And after that, we're gonna put it onto a plate to go into the oven at 400 Fahrenheit for a couple of minutes until they start coloring a little bit and give it some olive oil too. All right, next we're gonna do the chimichurri. We're gonna add some shallot, the jalapeno, some caper, the mint leaf, the dill, the parsley, some green onion, a little bit of citrus juice, and a hefty amount of olive oil. Give it a pinch of salt. And after that, all we gotta do is mix everything together and taste it if you need more salt, pepper, or citrus. And there we have it, a beautiful chimichurri. All right, up next, it's time to cook the pasta. We got some salted boiling water. We're gonna put the pasta in. It should be one minute to cook. After that, we're gonna filter it, put it into a bowl, add the chimichurri, flip it around, mix everything together. And then we're on to plating time. We're gonna put our pasta in first. After that, we're gonna top it with the tuna. Sprinkle a little bit of crumble on top. And I like to end it with a little bit of sprout just to finish on a light, nice little touch visual. And there we have it, guys. The perfect little tuna noodle crazy stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how to name it. It's crazy. We've done it again. The pasta strike again. Look at the beauty. I mean, I gotta, I gotta be honest, this is the most pretty one we've done so far. It's looking so beautiful. 
and it's probably the wildest one. I mean, this recipe is kind of all in my head, but it worked together perfectly. The taste should be on point. Let's, we gotta taste it, but I feel like all those things should work perfectly together. Um, do we just dig in? I'm kind of hungry, so let's just dig in. After that, we're gonna talk. Whew. Mm. Yeah, this is, this is just, mm. but it's so fresh and the tuna is just not overpowered, but still there, there's, there's a lot of flavor, but the tuna is still, you know, you can still taste the fish, which is a tough thing to do, you know? Question of the day is we got to choose between four things, either beef, chicken, pork, or lamb, only one can survive. I will say probably I would let go lamb, because lamb, I don't eat it that much. I really love it, but it's not a, it's not something I I do a lot of, you know? I still love lamb, I think it's, it's a freaking amazing meat. I feel like I'm more of a pork guy than a beef guy. I think pork is still there and we get the beef out. So beef and lamb are out, now it's pork versus chicken. Now, let's be real. Chicken is like the ultimate uh, meat, you know? Everybody that eat meat, eat chicken, you know? It's like, agree that chicken is perfect and good, you know? Okay, I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta end it on the fact that I couldn't live without bacon. So, pork wins, but you know what? That was, that was a good try, chicken. You, you nearly got me, but freaking bacon, man. Bacon is too powerful. Bacon is like dog Vader level, you know, it's like it's like a full grown Jedi master, you know, and like You cannot fight against that, you know, it's too powerful. Um, I don't have nothing else to say, but clean plate and Yeah <laughs> a Success a delicious a fantastical Thank you all for watching and it has been a pleasure, like always. You guys are a fantastic crowd. I love uh, the energy. And I shall see you for... I don't, I don't remember what the... I shall see you for another crazy adventure. Peace.